What's up, Piper Drivers? This past Friday, I made the trip all the way to Batu and back to pick up the limited edition Asajj Ventress lightsaber box set that was being sold at Galaxy's Edge. But is Disney's latest exclusive lightsaber set worth all those credits? Let's find out. So I first found out about this release a few weeks back, and I let you guys all know that it was going to be coming out in the parks on March 8th. But oddly enough, there really wasn't a lot of information about this lightsaber set when it first came out. There, there was no price, there was no edition size that was listed. So I kind of went into this blindly. All that it said was that it would be releasing at the Disney parks on March 8th and then on the DisneyStore.com on March 11th. So I got up insanely early in the morning to make sure that I was there because it's a three hour drive for me. So this is the very first re-release of the Asajj Ventress lightsabers since it was released in the parks at the opening day of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And those original versions of the lightsabers sold out and they fetched for a pretty good amount of money. They still remain one of the most sought after legacy lightsabers that Galaxy's Edge ever released. With some fetching as much as $800 per lightsaber if you wanted to get one. Which is insane when you think about that those lightsabers ran $150 when they first released. Now this box set right here ran $426 out the door at Galaxy's Edge and it's currently the only place that you can get it until Monday. Now, I don't know if they sold out, but I did see a lot of people walking out with four boxes in hand, so it's likely that they did. This box set is special because it replicates the box that Count Dooku gave Asajj Ventress in her first appearance on the Clone Wars animated shorts, which I think is really cool and a smart move on Disney's part because there's so many of us that are fans of that original animated short. And for all of us, it was a first look at what the Clone Wars would eventually look like. But even cooler than that, it not only replicates the look of the box, but also in the way that it opens. You just lift this latch right here and you flip open and you can see that the box opens up like the petals of a flower, which is beautiful. Once the box is open, you can see that you have the certificate of authenticity. It says Disciple of the Sith, Legacy Lightsaber Set, and then Arabish it reads Limited Edition. They only made 4,500 of these worldwide. So that's gonna be spread between both Disney Parks and DisneyStore.com. And then it reads Jedi. Jedi. Their order is a fading light in the dark. Corrupt and arrogant. They must be punished. The Jedi shall fall. This is what she actually said just before Count Dooku presented her with the lightsaber set. When you lift over the foam, you can see the lightsabers there. They're inside of a velvet red felt, which feels real nice, feels you know real pretty, and I love the presentation. It does have a lot of flair when you look at it this way. Now, if you're hoping for something special with these lightsabers, you're probably gonna be sadly disappointed. These are identical lightsabers as the ones that were first released at Galaxy's Edge. So there's absolutely nothing different about them. They're bulky, you know, they're heavy lightsabers and the features that come with it aren't the best either. So when you pop a blade in here, you get the sound that it connects, but it is the most quiet lightsabers that I've ever, I've ever heard. You can barely hear the sound there's no smooth swing whatsoever. There's barely any clash that you get with it. So if you're expecting something different or if you already own these lightsabers from the original set, you're not gonna get anything more from this. Another bummer is that this box set doesn't feature any music when you open up the box. It's not the first box set to not feature music, but it is nice to have that. And considering that some of the other boxes came with it, I feel that all of these box sets should feature music. So was it worth it? That's ultimately up to you, but here's my take on it. So if you were originally going to buy these lightsabers back on their first release, it would have cost you $150 per lightsaber. Also, these weren't available online. At least I don't think they ever were. So you had to enter into the park, you know, adding to the cost. Now they're including a box with it, which looks magnificent. I think the box is probably what makes this collectible even better for an extra hundred dollars. So I feel that the price is fair and on the money. It hasn't gone up too much. I think it's, it's a good price point. If nothing else, you could buy the box set simply for the box, sell off the lightsaber hilts, and then replace them with some NeoPixel or more you know, sizably accurate lightsabers. And now you have an unbeatable presentation. So for those of you who couldn't make it to the parks this weekend and are looking to pick it up, I hope you're able to get one on Shop Disney or at least an affordable price on the second market. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments below. And until next time, may the force be with you.